Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to round two of the Adelaide Eternal Highlander Challenge for July 2018. I'm Drew Carter in the booth with Beckett Wolf. A warm g'day, guys, to you all. All right, and who have we got here? We've got James Arthur on the left, I believe, playing like a dark bant, nono red, greed creep, white, blue, black, green, mid rangey, control ish deck. Yeah, nono, nono red, as in everything but red. Yeah, so it's doing a lot. And then on the right, um, we've got Rob CJ. Is it? Yeah, on blue white control and slash uh, tempo slash. Yeah, I mean at a at a glance, it's it's definitely control, but uh, he's got a few. You know, he's got like true name and click, and I think he's got the ability to play like a tempo, uh, and he's got um, Stoneforge Mystic package in there as well. Okay, so it's not it's more like an Esper Stoneblade without the black. Okay, and then so you're looking close more closely at James's list. He's 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 got the four color. Um, land based with wasteland his points are wasteland stoneforge mystic as well um, so it's a stoneforge mirror yeah and then he's got soul ring skull clamp and i gotta say james i don't know about the soul ring in here man you're playing four colors and he's got soul ring um which produces colorless uh, do you think that's going to be an issue for him the colorless soul ring that's three points. That's a huge chunk of the deck. I think it's a risk reward thing. Like if you can curve out into your big threats like Batter Skull, Sword Fire and Ice, Obnixilus Reignited, Garrick Relentless, those curve toppers. If you get use the Sol Ring for that, you're going to be rewarded. But if you end up with like a lot of cheap interaction with and all cards like um, Leovold, cards like um, yeah, I mean Leovold's black, green, blue, right? Yeah, so and, and Offensa is a yeah, similar. Plenty, yeah, exactly. There's plenty in there that Soaring can't help at all. Um, but depends what you see. Yeah. He's also quite an aggressive deck. Like he's running Dark Confident in there. You know, like this is Along, this isn't this mm-hmm. isn't just a traditional mid range. I mean, Dark Confident obviously is played in like a mid range deck, but I see Dark Confident in Highlander as a very aggressive card. Okay. Um, I suppose he's got the life game maybe to offset some of the pain he can get from... He's got Thrag Tusk and he's got... Yeah, Thrag Tusk. I like Thrag Tusk in there with Sol Ring. He doesn't have Jit though for life game. But he's got Batter Skull. So he's late game life game. But he's also, yeah, taking pain from Bitter Blossom. But he obviously feels, yeah, that he can support the the, uh, the Dark Confident. Although if he gets unlucky with hitting a Thrag Tusk and a Tassica, that's a lot of damage. Yeah. We didn't have uh, Rob's list in front of us. But, uh, yeah, I believe he was on that blue-white deck. Uh, should we go down to the game, Stu? Yeah, sure. Let's have a look. All right. Who's favoured, do you think? Um, well, I think James has got the greed. So he's he's got more colours, therefore he should have more power, but he may have less consistency, depending on his mana base. So you think if James... If they both draw perfectly, James is favoured? Yes, because he's got more colours and therefore more power. That's yeah. just a... a a brute no, I agree analysis. With that. I yeah. agree with that. And he's also got yeah, the Soul Ring, which is sort of like a more in-your-face kind of card. Uh, and, and Rob's playing a very safe and consistent style with, um, you know, ways to interact, ways to remove, and, um, you know, the one, Stoneforge Packet. That's yeah. a pretty decent hand. There's a Stifle there as well, which could be interesting. Oh, that could like really Stifle. That's juicy. And it could really punish... I think James is mulligan here. Yeah. It could punish the, the colour greed as well. Yeah, if definitely. If it's a fetch. Um, I think so, we were talking about it earlier today. Uh, I haven't seen Stifle much. I used to play it in a bug aggro list, and I found it really, really good, and then I never played it again. Uh, and mm. I don't know why, because I, I quite liked it. I've had mixed results. Early on, I didn't... I never had it... The timing was never right for me. I, I, I tapped out for a threat... Then they fetch, and I just miss the opportunity. Mm. But then I started playing differently. I started thinking maybe I need to keep, rather than play a dude, I have to take time off and the keep you're up playing the... stifle in. You want to you be want the dudes, I know, exactly. but you also want to hit the land. So I think it's a fine balance. There's throw tusk birds and an inquisition. It's a good hand. That's where you want to be. Mana dork. Uh, James doesn't have many mana dorks in his deck, but he's definitely well, he's got the birds there and definitely going to get rewarded for it. Two lands there, was it? Two lands, yeah. I don't know how heavy land heavy he was, but top top is pretty good there. So he wants the lands. Um, One thing I was saying before about colours and the greed, like if Rob had, let's say, a back to basics, he could have he could punish that greed further. But I'm not. I don't think he's running back to basics. Um, yeah, back yeah, to basics would be good in this deck. I mean, it's blue white. Uh, I don't know exactly what his points are, but once you get the equipment package in, Stoneforge is one, Jits one, Clamps two. I don't. Oh, I don't think he is running Clamp. 
It's pretty expensive to pay a point for back to basics. Yeah. There's, Inquisition there's, here. There's a good card. So do you counter the Inquisition? Uh, ooh. Um, Depends. You will... If you got... Oh, no spell piece doesn't do it. It's likely not to... He's got two counter spells. Yeah. He's got, yeah, that is. He's got two counter spells, so... He's yeah, so you know. Even if he loses one, he'll still have right. one up to stop the two drop. That could be dark confident. So now that you've seen this, do you now take Snapcaster Mage? Yeah, because Stifle is obviously not great in Rob's hand now that James knows about it. Because Stifle has got the gotcha factor. The other thing about Stifle is it's not just for lands. There's plenty of sweet triggers. Um, yeah, and even if you're losing Cardavan, it's something like a Torrential Gearhawk ETB trigger. Yeah, or a, uh, even a Snapcaster Diaflate. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of like solid triggers that can get you up in tempo uh, and he's taking counter spell there uh, which so is fine he's but just, like, logic mm, not the same so yeah, I'm wondering he just if snaps to, better yeah I think so because he, he's, well, he's, he must reason that he's just trying to bleed out the counter spells rather than playing to him at some point but you do reduce Rob's options if you take away a different card um, Reflector Mage is going to get him some tempo oh, or yeah I like Reflector oh that's a shame for Rob although he did preordain so he, so he's made that choice so he has made that choice stay on the two lands Reflector Mage could punish the birds, at least tempo-wise, but um, but birds is going to here and stifle. He knew about the stifle. Yeah, just played into it. I guess I don't mind that because Rob's missed the land drop, so James goes well now. I can't get logic knotted, uh, so th that's fair. Yeah, and you it, could drop Leo now if you had if you had it. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame that Rob missed the third land because obviously you want to keep up stifle and logic knot. Although, yeah, again the preordain. I hmm. surely you want to hit your third third land unless we miss something there if you top bottomed or something like that or do you no no it was top top maybe he just he's just happy sitting behind the count spells for a while um I guess yeah. that implies to me it's a more aggressive deck if he's happy to not hit land drops Tassig is here is good uh, although obviously eaten by logic not and I feel like James might not have a great hand see so, uh, my reason is the opposite like he must have other threats to, to back up otherwise why would you just ditch your, your Tass uh, the the reason I think his hand is bad is because if I had a bunch of threats, I would cast all the other threats, and oh, I'd keep okay. Tassiga for the end. And once I've got five cards in the bin, I'd go one mana Tassiga with either four mana to activate him immediately and mm. get card advantage back, or go like Tassiga Goy, so you can overload the control deck by going like two threats in one turn. Yeah, like, Tassiga is better when he costs one mana. Yeah, right? that, yeah, that goes without saying. Yeah, I mean Highlander does. Oh, we've got draw step. Click okay. Highland does seem to be often about who can do two meaningful things in the one turn, yeah. uh, and Tass definitely helps that. All right, so we've got Shambling Vents, Thrag Tusk, Gideon, the four mana one, Ally of Zendikar, and Fatal Push. Where is Rob looking? I mean, if you take Fatal Push, then he loses his sort of tempo play because Rob might want to protect his own click. So, what was the bottom card? It's Shambling Vents. Oh, yes, okay, so we can't take that. So I'd be tempted to take the Gideon just because it's a four mana threat. Yeah, and but, but there's another. You could blank his turn. Yeah. Okay. So he's hovering over Gideon. He's taking Gideon. All right. I the reason I wouldn't take Gideon there, I don't think it's wrong necessarily, but the reason I might not take Gideon is because, uh, Click's quite a quite good versus Planeswalkers. Mm, that's true. So Gideon makes a Click. Click will kill the Gideon over two turns. Although then there's two two twos. But Rob's hand is more brutal. Yeah, he's hit the soul oh, ring. Yeah, okay. You could get rid of one of the two twos with the Reflector Mage. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, Reflector Mage is actually also quite good against Gideon. And you've already got the click out. Um, that's a shame, though, from Rob. I mean, he got pretty severely punished. Yeah, that was an awesome top deck with soul ring. I certainly don't think it was like wrong to take Gideon. Um, just like my preference would be to maybe even leave the hand. We are talking about in, in a different video mm. how click... Um, leaving their hand just so, for the knowledge mm. even if they've got quite a good card leaving leaving their hand as it is yeah but it's pretty bold to then say okay untap and play your Gideon though but yeah he could have because he's so got he's bounced Thrag Tusk but I think they've missed Thrag Tusk actually says when it leaves play it's not like when it dies oh okay so when it enters you get 5 and when it leaves you get the 3-3 three, three. so so James should have a 3-3 three, three. James should have a 3-3 three, three. so it looks like they've both missed that because Rob surely wouldn't have played Reflector Mage into the Thrag Tusk because it just generates such a great value yeah. life and dudes yeah yeah um i mean james is still going to get the etb again of the game five but he's then 
you should also have the three three. So why is he why is he attacking here rather than replaying? Got no idea. I surely while while um is Rob's he... tapped out, you know, you want to play the the swag tusk. Right, it's in his hand. I can't imagine why you wouldn't. Hmm. What could he be scared of with one mana up? Like, spell pierce doesn't hit it, or no. No, I, I don't think there's much. I mean, even uh, even the swords swag yeah. swag tusk. Um, it, sorry, even days. Yeah, wouldn't have wouldn't, it. wouldn't do it. So, yeah, I, I can't imagine why he wouldn't wouldn't do it. Even a sweeper, right? Oh, I guess if they don't know about the leaves, though, if they've got the leaves play trigger, then a sweeper wouldn't wouldn't matter. But yeah, I'm not sure. No, he James would at least from th- he'd probably just thinks when it dies, you get the yeah. guy. So like maybe, it's voice of resurgence or something. It's okay, so you think, but you yeah, but Rob wouldn't probably sweep when he's got two guys on the exactly, board himself. Yeah. So I'm not sure what. And he doesn't have supreme verdict mana yet, or or wrath mana yet. Um. Oh, he did at the time because he had a fetch land. Oh, true. But Rob true. fetched basic high because he saw the wasteland. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, so what are we tapping up for here? Is this Thragtos now? So Thragtos, now that he's got Cryptic up. I don't understand that, Drew. And mm. he knows about the <laughs> Snappy, so he just knows that's going to be Snap Logic Knot or Snap Counter, yeah. Um, okay. So he, he's at least got five life out of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, you want a bit more. Okay. I don't... Yeah, I like Tyler's Tracker. Maybe he values... Do you think you can value Tyler's Tracker more than Thragtusk? Mm, no. Could, I but, think no, I think no. when you've got one card in it, when you've got a land in hand, but um, demonstrably he does not have a land in hand because he would have played it then. So these basics are good for Rob because um, he's immune to the wasteland. Um, would you? So when do you get a when do you get a clue for this this tracker? When so you the tracker it, is when a land enters, enters, you get the clue. Okay. And when you sack a clue, he becomes plus one plus one. When land enters, okay. So you just know what you can't, okay. Wasteland yourself to get a clue or anything. No, no, no okay. there's no tricks with that. Although, you know, Tyler's Track is quite good because if they've got like a bolt, you can just play the land like a fetch land and then the clue enters uh, and they can't like interact with that. They can't kill it before the clue enters or anything like that. Uh-huh, and, then, priority. and then if they do try to kill it, you can fetch in response and then they're waiting for you to fetch and you never fetch and it kind of just gets awkward. Um, so often... Tyler's track will end up with two clues. So Rob's beating down here, and James is only on eleven despite gaining five life. But sort of fire and ice is a huge play. It's a huge, Ooh, huge but play. then he's and got that's a counter. A, that's a really big play as well. I was going to say the colorless might be hurting James a bit, but there with that sort of fire and ice is exactly what you want. You just need like plenty of mana. Uh, Spell Quell is super strong here. Yeah, because well, it gives him a lot of power on board ahead. and flying power as well. And there's no good blocks for James either. Like. He's going to have to block with Tyler's Tracker next turn, I think, to stabilize his life total. Or... Oh, he's got Shambling Vent, which has got Life Link, actually. Yeah, so that's a good racing tool. So he's getting in there. Okay, I don't mind that, because he can activate and block Shambling Vent, which stops Snappy from swinging. And, and stops Reflect the Mage. Although it kills Snapcaster, yeah. Well, I think if you would rob, you basically only swing Click, right? Uh, sorry, Click End. So Rob knows that James has Fatal Push, is that right? Correct, Yeah. yeah. So that so that spell quell is a bit okay, but he doesn't he doesn't he needs doesn't the revolt. revolt okay he needs he needs to lose something from his battlefield All right so you wasteland yourself and do it yeah okay. <laughs> is that strange. but is that terrible or is that that's pretty terrible okay but I'll, I think sort of fire and ice is like a trump card if you can hit with it you can win the game although he's on low life so how's he going to get revolt all right so he's Block. Alpha striking here. You can block with your birds. You can block with birds, and oh, I like yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. James, is, this is pretty good for James. He gets to stabilize his life turtle from the life link. So he blocks reflector major. Sorry, snap. Even better, snap. And then he chumps click, gains two. So he's only taking two, going down to nine, and he's killing snap. And, and he's getting revolt and black mana from birds. Black mana from birds and or uh, shambling vent. Yeah. Okay. But there's cryptic mana out, so he just gets kind of schnitzled if uh, Rob cryptics the fatal push, right? And you just counter counter draw, yeah. yeah. So this might, yeah. So James here is happy that at least he's bled out two, well, three counters, including Snapcaster. Yeah, I think he probably wanted to even tap 
Yeah, yeah you, no, 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 yeah. Days or something Always like that. get the mana. Yeah. Although it clears at the end of combat, wasn't it? Yeah, but that's what I mean. So, oh, okay. so you, can you can go could... damage step and then there's an end combat step where cast. you're still in combat but damage has been dealt. So you tap birds and... I mean that... Cast fade push then. Yeah, but... So you play around days. Arguably, but then you might also be hoping Rob taps, you know, four mana for something and then you get to fade a push when he tapped out. So it's not it's not like a misplay. Um, so I think a mark of uh, James's deck as well. So I, was, I wanted to look at how many counter spells he's playing because I don't he doesn't have double blue now. So what's he playing blue for? Like um, what, what does he get out of? He's blue? got Leo. Oh, Leo. Yeah, I like Leo. Uh, Trinket Mage to get the Soul Ring if you really want to get it. I like that. I think it's worth running. Hostage Taker is very strong. Yeah, I like Hostage Taker a lot. I got absolutely beat by Hostage Taker in uh, top eight at Eternal Weekends. Yeah, it's a great card. Is it the only counter spells he's got? Are days and evasive action. They're good ones. They're good ones. They I are, think they're but... beautiful in this deck. So there's a fatal push on um, Spell Queller getting back sort of Fire and Ice, and James was looking out of it, but the Shambling Vent, I think, is what sort of got him back into it because obviously Sword is the power card, but it's very clunky, and obviously we saw it get semi countered tempoed by Spell Queller, and what's helped his tempo with the shambling vent so i think shambling vent is actually the all-star here um, how much life has he gained in, in, during the course of the game five from thrag tusk four from shambling vent four from shambling and then it's also blocked so effectively yeah. six yeah so that's another yeah reason why dark confidence supportable in this deck because the life gain from shambling vent yeah and uh that is brutal, <laughs> brutal. <laughs> um, um, yeah so you can see i mean sophie's very powerful but it's clunky right for that reason you yeah know. you're soft to removal although can he still plan to equip the shambling vent yeah but you can't block you can't equip and block because mm. it stops being a creature and it unequips so no. again it's kind of clunky but the life game that's is... a good one stoneforge mystic oh okay yeah, so it's really something one. else to equip and some more gas so you just you just get battle skull to slam it down at some point uh yeah I like battle skull and he's yeah. going battle skull um you just want a creature I think yeah so that's that's just dual purpose on this stage of the game it's a dude for fire and ice as well about a skull isn't it that's right because i think you are going to lose if rub has a way to interact with the creature and you just keep trying to equip your creature and every time you try to connect it dies before you get the value out of the sword but yeah so every creature on james's side is a is a huge but threat keep in mind that uh, it gives the creature pro blue so there can't even be like a chump block here um to prevent the shock and the draw card and there can't even be something like repeal or you know mm. cryptic bounce. I mean, there can be cryptic tap, but you know, like it limits Rob's options for how he interacts with this because of the pro blue. Yeah, so he's already used Path of Exile. He's still got swords in the deck somewhere, but yeah, he needs white removal. So yeah, there's another blue great card, but can't block the um the equipped creature. Yeah, pro blue. It's an interesting one. But but uh, he's only on six, so. I think Rob's trying to think, how do I get that last six damage in? I've got Click and um, Rob Trin, feels Trinome. close, and Trinome feels really good there because... Two swings away from victory. He's quite good at blocking the Batter Skull because the Batter Skull doesn't gain life, and, you know, it's good at swinging into Batter Skull because it's Vigilance. Um, so, yeah, I still I still kind of like Rob's position, although, it, you know, I think, I think basically Rob needs another... Rob has another removal. He's going to get there, and if he doesn't, he's not. I think it's as simple as that. Um, the removal will get him the tempo he needs to get him with True Name for the lethal. Yeah. Oh. True yeah. Name is a really interesting one. I learnt um, a little bit too late after getting blown out about some tricks you can do with like damage prevention. So if you play like Skullcrack, if they like swing, if you, sorry, if you swing into a True Name and it blocks, and then you Skullcrack, mm. Skullcrack says damage can't be prevented. Uh, um, and most people play Skullcrack for like the life gain stop but the protection mm. from players actually damage being prevented so you can actually kill the true name are there any other playable cards that have that kind of uh, effect yeah there's like a uh, Tarka's Command and other oh, random yeah. like okay. um, I can't remember off the top of my head but there, there are like a surprising amount um, so Pyrrhic Vortex doesn't do it though because that's, no, that's just a play that can't go live but watch out for that one guys because that's a real play and um you might not know about it and you might just have a random especially if you're playing Ooh, Leo's another premium threat at this stage of the game he's just dropped two that soul rings help him drop two big threats that's right and I think the lifelink's going to get away here 
So Soaring's done a lot of work in not just kind of ramping at a crucial point and getting that first thrag task. But, but let's but let's say Rob's got something. I think Rob's still got a chance. He can go cryptic tap. Okay, he doesn't. He doesn't <laughs> he didn't have the cryptic. I was gonna what say, were you going to say? What true you... name. True name's okay. So you, two turns, right? Yeah. So you just attack six. and then cryptic to de- to prevent the counter attack. Yeah. And then or you... you or you just remove the batter skull because batter skull's the only thing gaining life. You chump block and. Um, Jump block with Leovold, take um, Stoneforge Mystic swing. Mm. But and I think. Swing I th- back lethal, right? Yeah, but you let him draw an extra card off the Sophie then. I think if you yeah, tap down all the but, attackers. But he, he's going to struggle to deal with True Name. Mm. I mean, obviously, Rob so, would have so, done it if he had it. So Rob would have won it. if he had Cryptic Command. Or any spot removal, I think. Just to take out the. Anything to take out the Batter Skull. Anything to stop the life gain, yeah. Okay. Because hmm. yeah, I mean, look, it's like what you were saying. Like the four color deck, um, you know, he, he didn't draw perfectly, but he drew well. He didn't get like screwed on his colors, and um, it is just like a little bit bigger. You know, in the in the end, I think stuff. James had like double the mana that um, that Rob had, and that just allowed him to play out his hand. Yeah, I think Rob finished with a few cards in hand. I think it's very interesting that Rob. Rob's preordained early I think that was like a real for me it's a big tell that he's not on control um, but he's, he's on a much yeah. more aggressive list stuck not, on two lands for a while certainly yeah. not aggro but but you know like almost like a mid-range list um, yeah because he was kind of the beat down there for a while yeah he was getting that life total down and trying to finish him off but without didn't have the reach to do it that's um, right but only just I think only yeah just. it was close so what do you think cyborg wise here for James oh, let's pull up his list because I think we don't have Rob's list but um, I, you know it's kind of tough to cyborg versus mid range because there's no like set strategy they're doing they're just trying to either play good creatures play good spells right yeah and there's, there's so a many... few two per ones but you know and so, so many sort of colors like junk, yeah like hydroblast something like hydroblast is not very reliable yeah, against James that's right um, so I think you know, he's obviously citing quite a few things, Rob. Um, maybe stuff like Submerge, Anti-Green. It's probably yeah. mostly green deck, right? Yeah. Submerge would be great. But instead of guessing, let's look at James's and we can... Well, I still, guess we're still guessing, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, but we can... <laughs> Thrun, the last troll's a good one. Uncounterable, untargetable like like threat. That. Obstinate Baloth, that's good against this card and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I really like Obstinate Baloth, although I don't know if I'd play it against this. No. It's good versus... It's good versus like black decks and versus red decks. You were saying you love Zealous Persecution love against it, uh, True Name and Cleek and I'd definitely be bringing Snappy that in. just to take off the one toughness. Especially considering you saw, you saw um, James saw the uh, preordained play. All right, that we saw the cards then as well. I think I saw Thrun definitely coming in. So I think James is probably also bringing in his artifacts. So there's Moat. I think a seal of cleansing Ooh. as well. Yeah, I like seal of cleansing there. Takes because the equipment was definitely strong in that last game. Yeah. So yeah, Rob would be trying to prevent those equipment shenanigans, which can be tricky actually. I think I like Phyrexian Revoker is a handy tool against equipment and and Planeswalkers. I found. Yeah, although these it's very vu- very vulnerable. To- well, a lot of these equipment decks don't run a huge amount of artifacts. Like the artifacts they run are very important and pointed. Um, and like you know, my junk list. I'm playing mainboard Rex Sage, mainboard Quasali, and I noticed that James has got him in the sideboard, and that's because there's generally enough artifacts or enchantments. But citing in extra artifact enchantment removal against these equipment decks, like a null rod, I don't side null rod no, in. No, that's risky because it I could be dead. That's right. I don't side null rod in against equipment packages. I find equipment when I'm playing a control deck or even an aggro deck, like equipment on the other side of the table is hard to deal with. Yeah. If I don't have the, the answer at the right time. And your deck probably has a lot of artifacts, like not yours personally, Drew, but mm. you know whatever you're playing, you know I've mm. got null rod in my sideboards when I and it switches off cards in my own deck. Mm. So you got to mm. think about it. It's basically there for the very heavy artifact. And it never feels great to play. Oh, there's a Bane, is that a Bane Slayer Angel? Yeah, Bane Slayer Angel. Go down. So, Lands and Lingering Souls. Okay. Always too quick, guys. You've got to hold it there for longer. <laughs> All right. If you're mulliganing, that's fine, Rob. You get a pass, but... <laughs> <laughs> hold it there so we can analyze. So, James has got access to a good counterspell in the gate out of the board. Uh, yeah, and a little bit of graveyard hate. And but... If I was James, I'd sight it in, but I think... He might even get punished for it because after seeing that Bane Slayer, I'm thinking 
Rob's definitely on like a more Esper a Stoneblade sort of deck. Mm, with more creatures. Yeah, okay. more, more creatures than you'd think, you know, like Spell Queller, Click, yeah. Snap. James didn't have too much trouble resolving his threats, so there's a Jit. Jit, there you go. So he's definitely that Esper Stoneblade deck. Um, Celestial Colonnade. Yeah, I like I like uh, Rob's list. Actually. I think in a two in a blue white deck, you almost need to play Celestial Colonnade just because of the fixes oh, yeah. your colors. It fixes colors, it's great. I, I think definitely. Even you if know, you end up never attacking with he's it, he's certainly not an aggro deck. So I think playing a, a man lands where he wants to be. So he wants to take advantage of his initiative here, but mm. the trouble with blue white is he can't do that much on turn two. Except Jace, he's got Jit. Jace Friends Prodigy. Oh, oh. Grim Monolith. Here we go. That's that's some good right. ramp. Okay, that's an interesting card. I'd... So it'd be lovely to untap and ramp into like a Bane Slayer Angel or something huge. huge like that. I was Grim... not expecting that. It's not a card you see often in Highlander, or if you do see it, it's in like big red or shops lists. Or... I've seen it quite a bit, but yeah, I've seen it in yeah, as you say, like um, big red or shops or um, like a yeah, like a artifacty interacty sort of deck. Ooh, bit of blossom fruit. Strong. I was expecting Baffle Strix or something, but. Um, that's a really well, who do you favour here yeah who well he's favor? got six mana so if he can drop a dragon or something <laughs> or Jitai that Ooh, but, pretty good. well that's kind of a dragon yeah okay this is a really good game because a bit of blossom I think is obviously traditionally very good against control um, and we were just saying how Rub's not quite control so the life but game... I think it's still good because mm. he's not aggro so I think it's bit of blossom's like perfect it's good against mid range it creates blockers exactly yeah it creates a threat and a blocker yeah. um, and those blockers might be very helpful here against the Battle Skull although the life gain is still going to matter at least Rob now he's hit, he's, he's hit his third land drop not not to mention the ramp so he's his cards are live in his hand he's not he's, he's ahead on tempo definitely definitely and James has to either play a threat bigger than Battle Skull or remove Battle Skull because um, the vigilance on it is very relevant yeah so you can't you can't really race Battle Skull can you no like it's an eight, eight point swing. Not, not a every, two three batter skull. Yeah. Sync collector. Sync that's a good one. Right. So let's see the look. hand. It's a two one. Um can you take any card with Sync Collector? No, it's instant or sorcery. Okay. But that card exiles. So And do you get it back if Sync Collector? No, no. Right, you never get it back. Yeah, well, that's so, cool. So it's it, it if you hit with it, it's less likely to hit than like a kite tail freebooter. But if you hit with it, it's a sure thing. You yeah, so all, you're getting card advantage out of it. That's right. Yeah, nice. Oh, it's a beautiful Tundra there. Although I don't run Sync Collector on my list because the amount of times I've played against Control and they just like didn't have, you know... Into a beautiful Swords too. Yeah, yeah you nice. don't resolve it. They just counter it? Well, like, look at this. There's no there's no instant or sorcery. Like, exactly. Oh, this. so it misses big time. Yeah. Okay. So it ha and, it, and it's just missed there. Although, traded one for one with the Swords, right? Yeah. So but still... But, but yeah, but Rob's ahead on mana there because it's a he's countered That's a three right. mana That's spell right. for one mana. But yeah, plenty of times I just hit... Even against like Storm, I remember playing against Storm and playing Sync Collector and just like whiffed because they had a bunch of eggs in their hand and mm. I was like, ugh. So why didn't James block there with the fairy? Good question. Maybe he wants to start swinging with the fairy because the first fairy is much better than the second fairy, right? Cause Especially if you get equipment, it can equip. Well, the first fairy, if you keep blocking every turn, you never swing. But if you take one swing from Batterskull and then block with the second fairy every time, the summoning sick fairy then you're always swing with one fairy okay so you yeah okay you, over the right. course of a long game you're getting five damage in or something that's right yeah or Ooh, drain into a three drop is good too okay the other option would be now he can double block and kill batter skull oh token triple block sorry. triple if you have yeah. the courser yes yeah. yeah so he was keeping that option alive so i like that batter skull uh, mana drain he's so good with grim monolith right yeah and the course would have been clutch if he had could have, would have given card advantage card quality life gain would have get him back in the game potentially yeah but Man now mana drain the problem with mana drain is often you don't get to use the colorless but we can see rob here powering out chitty and equip i was about to say he's going to untap grim monolith but power out chitty so you got the double equipment equipment with Casper double delight <laughs> all right now we see the block oh and chitty um is absolutely going to tear that bit of blossom apart on 14 so how many how quickly can he win here what pretty quick right two, two swings maybe well, well he's gonna have to use his gd counters to kill the kill, kill the blockers blossom, yeah but like he's just gonna keep connecting tireless tracker. tireless tracker did well last game but might not be good enough here did it do well last game well it it, 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 was, it was on the winning side <laughs> it was on the winning side <laughs> it didn't do a lot did, though i didn't think it did much. it just blocked yeah okay yeah 
But he's got the fetch here, so that's so he's got one clue from the land yeah, drop, be, yeah. and can get another one. And he could, you know, kind of dig for an answer, or or he could just uh, say go, and fetch, and uh, sack the clue mm-hmm. to get a four three. Uh, but then Batascope just pumps. Yeah, oh, this is why Jiggy's good, counter. right? Yeah, so, so he... hard to maths with the Jiddy out. Yeah, I find it hard at the best of times without a jit, but. <laughs> he's uh, so, so okay so he didn't remove the two no and fairies. he forgot about the jitty counters I think because he hasn't he hasn't yeah as you were about to say sorry he hasn't used jitty so he's forgotten about that yeah because I suppose if you took out the two fairies oh he's remembering now yeah. and James is he's giving and time. Rob can't remove Tyler's tracker because he could fetch a response and sack the clue to make it bigger and then trade with the battle skull. But now, which is or, although now that he's got the four counters, yeah. Uh, anyway, we're seeing. But he, he wouldn't have had it last in time. response to duress. I really like that. Um, Gives him another body to equip if he needs it. That's right. Makes use of his mana. And it's or, not. Although it's a bit scary in that James could drop a Thrag Tusk or something big here, but yeah, but a Thrag Tusk doesn't beat. He needs to get rid of the. If the board. Let's I, say. Let's I don't say think anything in James's deck beats Batter Skull equipped to Jit. Right. Well, he, like he swings as a twelve twelve. No, no yeah, does. you need the re- removal. Or, or you need to. Ma- he he could have his own Batter Skull and his own sort of fire and ice. Um. But the Jitty is just going to be able to. Oh, because he's whatever. ahead. He's ahead on counters. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I'm like, Jitty is really good against Jitty. Yeah. essentially yeah I remember some guys um, reminiscing about JIT Wars back in the day when it first came out oh like, yeah it was, they said Standard. it was a bit of a complex yeah, yeah a bit of a nightmare because, you know I'll re- what, respond to your counter respond to your counter respond to your counter yeah like, by putting on plus the stack two and then I'll neg one it again but then I'll plus two again and now it's a 6-6 six, six and I'll swing and now mine's a 6-6 six, six, so I connect and yeah. yeah be prepared for that if you're playing the JIT but yeah. basically if James tries the JIT equip here Rob can just kill. He doesn't need to kill, kill whatever treats, creatures. Yeah. He just kills whatever is equipped to jit. And I like Rob, that Rob's not using his jit counters because um, I guess he's saving it up for like a really good creature. What's in his Rob's hand? Like, let's say Rob had the spell coiler and two non instants and sorceries. Would you just let the duress whiff then and hold up the spell coiler? You would, wouldn't you? Well, I like being proactive with spell coiler. And a lot of people go, like, oh, that spell coiler's got my lightning bolt under it. If I kill the spell queller, I get the lightning bolt back and I can lightning bolt this thing. By the time James does that, he might not have mm. a non creature thing to, yeah. to take. Yeah, sometimes just changing the timing of the spell is important. The spell yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So we're up to six counters here. Uh, it's probably now time to start using. Okay, and here we go in years. Yeah. You don't I, want to have to fetch another dice. Yeah. I, yeah, that's right. It's awkward, isn't it? I like. Yeah. Is he just gaining one? No, he's. Yeah, he was gaining life off of Batter Skull. I mm. like this. You want to keep like four counters in the jet at least so, so that, mm. to, to, to stop something like really big coming out, like as we say, like a Sophie and Equip. But um, yeah, Use it, you, you know, six is probably quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, and I think he wants to stop James from getting effectively a mana advantage out of the Stoneforge Mystic, um, knowing that he could get a Batter Skull into play on the cheap. He just wants to slow him down, and Manus a part of slowing people down. Yeah, ten life to thirty-four, and the board. I think Rob's got this. Oh, he's in a massive. Yeah, but you know lead. what's interesting? Again, only with three lands. I was just about to say he's done this with three lands. Yeah. So um, obviously he had a grim monolith, but uh, be interesting to see looking at the list again how many lands he's playing uh, compared to James. Um, mm-hmm. Well, he's played it quite well, and I like the grim monolith there to to power out these artifacts. I mean, that's why he's put it in the deck for this exact situation. Um, so it's played out really well for Rob. And, you know, he's obviously constructed his deck on purpose to be like that. So, um, so hard. He's James is in the tank. He's got Lingering yeah. Souls. James is, okay. on, James is on 23 lands. Drop Decay is the start of how you get away from this. But Yeah, that's a good one. It's so hard to do maths when Jit's involved. Do you kill the Jit or the Germ? Or the... Germ. Or... Oh, the Germ. Oh, the Germ. Oh, you try and... If his the equipment... Germ. Maybe the only way you win is if you just kill all these creatures and let his equipment be dead. Yeah, I think so. So the way, the way you start that is by abrupt decaying a dude. 
probably the spell quite oh, oh no the the equipped guy because the battle skull could be dead um if you can't it doesn't have five mana to re-equip it yeah so, so we th- saw jit kill two batter, uh blue blossom tokens uh on its way out but now so if you took out if you took out germ, the germ he could have re-equipped jit to spell queller and got in there and but, then but the yeah. battle skull would have been dead which is would, but good. i think the jit is crushing the bitter blossom and the lingering souls and so you know what I like okay. I like take this all of it go to three and then you get to untap oh no so you can't because a bit of bit of boss yeah what were you going to say no no this is better block once but not both and then you get one from the bit of blossom and two from lingering cells so you got four so you got enough to kill to trade with the batter skull trade with batter skull yeah and he's also got a cheeky shambling vents there as well don't forget yeah, that could get him back in the game if he's Good. gains the gains the life over some yeah. turns, oh. and there's life gain as well. We knew he had that from a Stoneforge Mystic, um, and he kept it in hand for a while, looking for an opening, which he didn't get here. Man, Manage- like, and a leak, oh, too brutal. Yeah, you don't expect to get leak this late in the game. He's fetching out for a land, yeah, going to five. So yeah. is this for the to flash back lingering souls? Yeah, this is to flashback. Or, or maybe, souls. or is it to counter with evasive action? I think either way, right? Yeah. Either, either one works out because you can quad block Batter Skull, stabilize, or, uh, yeah, Batter Skull or Tracy. Where's that? Uh, 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 I think we. Did... Oh, how to find. Yeah, I think Whoa. James ran out of lands there. Whoa, and brutal. That... Because that's where that's where my point about the four color greed comes in. So he had reduced consistency there because he had no more islands to fetch out, okay? Because of his colors. Mm. So if you look, and, and this is another mark of it's how he didn't have any blue, or because he was assuming he could get like water grave and get the black, and then he realized Scalding Tarn doesn't even fetch black. Yeah, well, he doesn't play red, so it has to get a blue exactly. source. Yeah, so maybe you don't play. So he, he already had underground, so I think he needed a fetch. Either he literally had failed to find. Or he was uh, assuming he was able to get black for souls. And he he's playing the full f- ten fetch lands as well. Is yeah. that? Do you think that's right in a four color uh, mana base? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't build four color, four color mana bases. So teach me. Well, there's not um, enough to fetch four, right? Yeah. Especially when you're running creeping tar pit, shambling vents, and yeah. wasteland. Yeah. On twenty three mana, the only basics is he's got forest and swamp as his only basics. He doesn't have an island. And that's another signal of how much he's not a control deck. Yeah. He's he's only got two counter spells and, and no basic island. Yeah. And he, uh, he may not even have two, any two blue It's quite cards. a splash for blue, isn't it? Yeah. Splash for Leovold, splash for Days, Brainstorm. Oh, that's kind of brutal for um for James, but as we were saying, Did arguably Rob, 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 is, so. Rob was leading the whole game. He was, although I think if that Batiscar resolved, he'd be parody. And if Lingering Souls resolved, he's not parody, but he's definitely... Like can mm. claw his way back. Rob could have slow rolled. Like he could have untapped his Grim Monolith and then equipped the Spell Queller with the Jit yeah. and the Batter Skull. But that takes time, and that time can give um, oh, James I think an it's opening. Still in Rob's favor either way. But yeah. uh, I think if he resolves something there, like even get Batter Skull countered and then flashback Souls, he can stabilize. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, going to game three. Um, I saw um, James brought in some equip, uh, the Corsali Pride Mage, and maybe a, a naturalize okay, or something, or fragmentize equipment package. And now he's got he's got like thrashing Bonzadon, frag naturalize, oh, sorry, Nature's Claim, and Corsali Pride Mage. So he's got he's got four, four in the in the sideboard in the sideline, yeah, it's quite a lot. And maybe Sin Collector negates coming out because he's realizing that yeah, it didn't hit. Well, the Sin Collect, yeah. What's Death Scavenger? Death Scavenger. Let's have a look. Uh, so James's hand of Nixilis reignited. He plays that in his Grixis list. James is a previous winner of Highlander, um, not the last time, but the time before with Grixis control, and he played of Nixilis. He liked of Nixilis. So Rob's hand here is a keep. It looked a bit landlike, but it's got preordain. So I think he's hoping to go preordain and find some lands. And he had uh, a few three drops. Council of Judgment. And detention sphere, which are a bit awkward in hand because they sort of fill the same role. Um, so James being on the play here, he'd want to untap and drop. Yeah. Well, he'd want to. Well, I've got a preordain here. Okay, so let's get some card quality. Make sure we hit our land drops. 
He's going both on top. He's changed the order. He's taken that land, I think it was. Yeah, the Death Guard Scavenger, by the way, for those interested, I've never heard of it. Um, it's three for three, two, and it like removes cards from graveyards when it enters and swings. So it's like graveyard hate with it's a graveyard hate, but it's like a tempo-y, stellar creature. Like it's saying, I don't want to play Torment Script and lose a whole card that does no damage just to mm. interact with your graveyard. I want something that like does interact with your graveyard. But I'm still applying pressure. Could you play the remorseless cleric, the new guy as well, the two one fly? Yeah, it's a similar trip. sort of role. Although that guy has to sack to do the ability, but I think it's a similar role. Okay. Yeah. This guy's a bit more expensive, but he's a bigger threat. Hmm. Uh, so let's yeah, see what the two drop is. So I was kind of speculating about. I was thinking Balfour Strix. Oh, <laughs> again. again, the dark, back to back. Robson. Rob won through it though. So yeah, that's true. You know, kudos to him. The last time he was on the play, and he had Grim Monolith. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Mana Drain. Oh, so much. Yeah, that's a good way. Oh, okay. That's a good way to cheat on mana as well. Alrighty, this is yeah, this is a both. So it could it could be a battle scroll versus bit of bit of blossom kind yeah. of re- repeat. Both decks seem to be doing pretty well. There's the battle scroll. Alright. Now, do you get battle scroll here? Oh, the choice is tough, isn't it? We've yeah. talked about it before. The choice is tough. Because you were saying the jit was doing more work last game, and especially against bitter blossom, it yeah, could be potentially more powerful. James's deck doesn't have a lot of removal, so arguably jit could be better. Jit's really bad when they have removal and really good when they don't so a fatal push here would be very bad for Rob yeah like or Jits, or Jits something. the best out of all three I think but not if they have removal okay who's so clearing the way with the uh, thoughts of these okay, so or you just seal. take the you can just take the batter skull yeah okay so we've got oh we already had the jit okay so he's got jit but he's got a lot of, he doesn't have lands no okay and so he did. He did again have a preordained. So this is three games in a row that Rob's been light on lands. Arguably, he's constructed it that way, especially in game one where we saw he kept a non-land and was happy to have two. I, I'm not sure. I think he's just got a little unlucky because he's got some angels in his deck as well. Yeah, that's. Which, a, I mean, there's two five mana spells. Um, he's got the seal of cleansing for the bitter blossom. He does yeah. So do you take that to to try and ride bitter blossom, or do you? Uh, I don't know because the batter skull scary. Yeah. Okay, so he, does that signal that he doesn't have removal? That signals that he... No, that I don't think it signals anything. Oh, it might signal that he, okay. he can take out the other equipment. Okay. Yep. yep, that makes sense. Yeah. So what about on turn two? He played Stoneforge. Was it ever right to play Jit instead? No, Just, I think Stoneforge is what it would be, yeah. yeah. But, but the he Stoneforge won't. here has been completely neutralized, where if he had oh, played... But only because of the double. <laughs> yeah, can't. but if he had played Jit, then any creature he plays... But that creature doesn't... That creature has so many sickness. So yeah. I think you'd rather be in a position where okay. you interact, you may be mana leak, and then you've got four mana, and you, they're tapped out, and you go, Jit equip swing. Okay. And yeah, you kill so them you, before they're okay. able to do that fatal push. Yeah, you treat Jit as like a four drop. Yeah, yeah, arguably. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to, but yeah, that's a that's a Whereas, cool way to do it. And it, also, Stoneforge cheats in Battle Skull, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm always trying to get, duck in things under counter spells, but there aren't many counter spells, so you just Ooh, have to play for... Into two, this is three in a row. And interestingly, Rob kept up Mana Leak um, instead of playing Seal. Yeah, that's and interesting. And I like Seal because Seal gets rid of the Bitter Blossom there. You don't... But, mm. He must have been scared of like a big four drop or something. Or... Yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you, but you sort of don't have the board. Like, you know, the traditional way of looking at it is he's hit a land. I want to counter spell when I'm winning on board, but the bitter blossom means he's losing on board because Stoneforge is terrible versus bitter blossom. So now we see seal. Um, and that's a Riptide lab for oh, some wizard shenanigans. Yep, yeah, yeah. Fix your mana. Get in there. And, uh, so I wonder if he plays Venser. He probably does. He's kind of tempo-ish. Interestingly, though, he didn't want to use his mana. He could have done Councils or Detention Sphere. Okay. So you, we, um, what do you do? You... To be like more efficient with his mana. But he's gone Seal. And ah, uh, so Thoughts is Inquisition, him and Duress. I don't think Rob was accounting for this much um, hand hate. But even still, they're... It's, what do you take? Because he's got two three drop removals both, and two like, angels. Exactly, they both fill the exact same roles, right? So there's redundancy there. It's like that... it's like two the same four, two cards, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that's another weakness of these hand disruption spells. Like if they do have a really redundant deck or hand, it's not that not that powerful, is it? I mean, it's still one card. In Highlander, one. though, you can't expect it. I think Rob was maybe hoping 
Um, because notice Rob didn't use seal of cleansing. He let James go to upkeep and trigger the bitter blossom. So he let him have an extra token. He didn't need to. He could have done it main phase. And I think the reason is he was hoping to uh, detention sphere the tokens because he, he wanted to detention sphere the tokens anyway. But there's no point giving him another or anyone to take the one life off. Is that the only advantage to waiting? Yeah. One life? Okay. Because if, if you think you're going to kill... Seen three hand hate spells in a row. So I think the chance that he had duress as well, like you can't really play around four hand hate spells. Um, okay. And I think, yeah, like literally, like it just triggers one extra life and detention sphere is better versus tokens because the last thing you want to do is like detention sphere a threat and then they kill the threat and get the ETB off the threat again and they yeah. trigger it twice and get value. So detention sphering the tokens is really good. So Council judgment really good against Thrun. I'm surprised you played Thrun into that because that's like one of the only ways you can deal with a Thrun. Yeah, he could have waited. Although he was not he was not going to get any more hand hate. Well, even just taking Council's judgment, in, if you have Thrun in hand, don't you take Council's judgment instead of detention sphere? Because mm. Detention Sphere can't exile Thrun. Yeah, so why did he take Detention Sphere? Maybe... He might have ripped Thrun. Yeah, true. He could have just ripped Thrun and gone, Detention Sphere's better versus the tokens. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, he's got his own insurance against equipment here in the yeah. form of Kosali Pride Mage. So James is in a good spot. Tap land there. That's... Yeah, so he's got... What's he got? He's got two five-drop angels in hand, Rob? Yeah. Um, and one other card, maybe. Or... But we can see even just a cheap threat of the Kosali Pride Mage is actually doing heaps. It's bigger than Stoneforge. It's a very decent clock, and it's also insurance against something really scary from Rob. And James has also got oh, the um, five mana though. Here we go. James also got Creeping Tar Pit to get in there for some sneaky damage, and that matters when Rob on seven. Uh, the unblockable is really powerful. It's going to attack, so it's a bit of a race here because James is surprisingly on low life because th- th- due to the Bitter Blossom. Yeah, and Thoughtseize as well. Yeah, okay, and fetching and. And Stoneforge, uh, Rob, you know, a lot of people forget about one damage. They don't think about it, you know, but Rob's actually been really on point with Stoneforge. He's making sure if the swing is good, he can't block, so might as well get in there. And uh, it's made a difference, I think. Nine to seven, and the race is real. So now, now he's got five for Baneslayer Angel. So he's reflecting which angel he wants to play. Is it like Baneslayer or... Oh, Wrath of God. That's an interesting choice. Because the board's not that scary but he's taken the board is good he's taken five damage and he's only on seven yeah but bane slayer angel deals with the board anyway yeah unless yeah you just yeah, maybe that's the fear of removal kind of coming in and, and I, was, you, I was about to say creeping tar pit is very strong the only the only thing rob could really lose to i think is like kill you know like path to exile your bane slayer mm-hmm. and then swing creeping tar pit lethal mm-hmm. but um, we've got the other one, the Flash one, Limvala, right? No, Archangel Iverson, I think. Archangel Iverson, and he's still got Baneslayer Angel. Yeah. But Archangel Iverson's got three toughness? No, it's 4-4, four, four, sorry. This is a 4-4? Four, four? Yeah. Okay, so Garuk can't kill it. Yeah. And Garuk can't kill the Baneslayer. So do you play Baneslayer or do you go like end of turn, flash this guy in Ooh. and then also play Baneslayer in my turn and just have like two big angels. We can play the Archangel Iverson as a blocker. He's indestructible when he comes into play. Mm. Um, I like that. I don't like the Wrath of God play. But the, the, re- the reason why the Wrath makes some sense is that you want to... If you cast an angel first, the Wrath's effectively dead in hand. But I think you'd reason that well, if you've got an angel in play, it doesn't matter if you've got a well, dead card right. in winning. hand. How do you beat an angel? Like, there's not that much in James's deck that can beat two angels, right? Like, you only have to... The life totals are so low that you only have to connect once with a Baneslayer Angel, I think, to, to, ensure, to, win the that, race. to ensure that you're ahead. Because James need to, like, needs to construct some kind of, like, Jitty and sword and connect oh, a few times. Master and Pulse. So, just spot removal. It's pretty strong here. And I think that's what Rob was fearing. Like, if he did tap out for that instead of Wrath and it got just taken out, he might have, he would have been on it's true. two. It's true, yeah. Um, but now Garuk's getting ahead... Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if you once you wrath, and then your opponent, like James, is left with creeping tarpet and plays a planeswalker, they're really hard cards to interact with. Yeah, but then you can wrath the next turn, right? So no, I'm so just saying. Go, I'm just so saying you, you got punished for the wrath because yeah. he had a planeswalker yeah. come. Up. And I think he also got punished for not flashing because he could have flashed and played around sorcery speed removal. Yeah, that would have got then around. He ensures thing. that he a can kill Garuk by swinging at it, or b block a wolf. 
or C, um, yeah. just swing face and race. Yeah, so if he'd gone for the flash option instead, he could have killed a wolf and killed Garrock. He plays around exactly Maelstrom Pulse. It's easy for us to say because yeah. Maelstrom Pulse was exactly the card that was played. Yeah, but I think he was wanted that life. He wanted the life ASAP from but the But he sort of played around. He played around Maelstrom Pulse with the Wrath play, and then didn't play around it with the Bane Slayer play. So either you're playing around th- like like sorcery speed removal, or you're not. Mm. Because he was scared of sorcery speed removal. So here comes the Archangel. Around. Oh, is it coming uh, in? No, I think James is, wants to know what the flip side of it is. Oh, well, okay, yeah, because he had seen it earlier with yeah. some hand disruption. And then here it comes. So he's attacking into it. Interestingly, James has tar pit, but no blue to activate. Oh, okay, there's another, yeah, yeah. greed kind of consistency issue coming up. Yeah. So that does... Oh, okay, here we go, path. That's the real game. So that's turned that block into a really awful block. And Rob's now in a position to kill Garuk. He's taken out two guys. Oh, no island. No, no island. Oh, off a fetch? Yeah, because obviously you'd want to fetch island to um, threaten tar pit swing. But that's got to be something in the back of Rob's mind as well. That like when he's calculating, well, it's too hard to play around sorcery speed removal, a really big threat, and a swing with tar pit though. Like, Mm. Well, he didn't have the swing with Tarpit. You've only got one or the other, right? Yeah, another sorcery speed removal there in the form of the Oblivion Ring. So he does have exactly what he needs, James. Yeah. I mean, arguably, Rob could take the two. I don't think he should have, but another way to play it was to take the two and ensure... Oh, Supreme, that's a shame. Just for a 2-2 two, two wolf that's going to get regenerated, basically, right? Yeah, but he's on four, so he's getting a bit desperate. Yeah, he is desperate. That is desperate. And Sylvan Library here, I think it's actually surprisingly strong. Life thought is a low, but he still gets to see the extra cards. I like the counter because I, you know, oh, tough. But yeah, I, don't, you, I don't mind the counter because I think he's going to draw into threats with the Sylvan Library. Yeah, that's right. But, the manipulation's good enough. That goes quarter doesn't do much. Well, it could take care of the creeping target if it comes live. Yeah, but I think if it comes live, it's lost anyway, right? Hmm. He's on four. Is he facing down lethal here? Or he's got a blocker in the form of the colonnade? He does. He has colonnade. Does he have any cards in hand? Uh, uh, yes, yeah. he does. But I don't think why we know it. Is mm. that right? Oh, yeah. I've seen all the cards come out. Yeah. I've seen the angels. Oh, this the... is brutal because Hyrak gives it plus one, plus one. That's rough as. So he has to just chump. That's really unlucky. Um, slash really well played from, from James because... Plus one, plus one makes Bronted on a four or five swing in that game. Uh, well done, both players. It was a really good match. Yeah, it was a good match to watch, actually. Um, Rob got his lands there and his angels, um, but just James just seemed to have the exact, like, the sorcery speed removal that... Well, I think also Garuk took over the game because Rob had two sweepers um, mm. and he, he they were both sort of lackluster against yep. the Planeswalker that could just keep rege- keep generating two two wolves. And yep. I really liked that James didn't have to do anything other than make 2-2 two, two Wolves. 2-2 two, two Wolves were exactly mm. where he wanted to be. Mm. Um, he didn't need to flip and do all this searching and you know, he just make a wolf every turn. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have a creature light deck or a creature light just draw, uh, Planeswalkers are really hard to deal with. Yeah. Although, even though he did have like the three mana uh, removal, you, he had to Rob use it on other cards. Surprisingly, probably quite good against Planeswalkers because well, he so does have flash, the dudes, yeah. Like flash flying, evasive dudes to to swoop in and kill a planeswalker but it sort of just didn't line up for him his life total was too precious for him to like really even consider blocks even mm. uh, like as in he couldn't swing Garuk necessarily because he needs to keep up blocks at a certain point so it's kind of a bit awkward and as i said the sweepers were awkward in rob's hand which was sort of unfortunate for him but then again james dismantled his hand quite effectively in the first couple turns so. yeah, and he had an early bit of blossom so he's always that's the whole point of it you leave your opponent with a clunky hand you don't get cut advantage but you leave them with a clunky hand and that's what what happened to him you kind of tempoed him out yeah, a little bit yeah all right well thanks guys we'll see you for the next round see you then